and welcome back. It's great to have you. I'd like to chat with you about why these social engineering techniques and attacks, why they work so well, and also, you know, talk about why somebody would use these attacks against another group or another company or another individual. We could have situations where somebody doesn't want to steal data per se or steal money or take money from a social engineering attack, but maybe they want to just compromise the thoughts of a group of people. I mean, that's a real deal. If we can, mod not we, but if an attacker or a group can modify the minds and thoughts of tens or hundreds of millions of people, that's a big deal. So we could have a type of hybrid warfare where there's attacking that's happening at one level, and there's also a social engineering or a thought campaign against the intellect or thought process of those people. And again, for something like that, the stakes are going to be quite high, and that's why they would do it. And because so many people today are compelled or they want to or they enjoy social media, that's an amazing attack vector to use with social engineering techniques and tools. And so for the rest of this video, I'd like to turn our attention to why. Why, why are these social engineering techniques and attacks, why are they so darn successful? So let's start off with some of the reasons, and I'll give you some examples of each one as we go through. Number one is authority. It, there's been test after test after test done that if somebody thinks that somebody else is in authority, like a doctor, a scientist, uh, a leader, et cetera, et cetera, and that person has authority, they're more willing to comply with that person's requests. So with social engineering, if somebody has a pretext or pretending to be someone they are not, like, hey, this is the CEO's desk or this is the XYZ person, we're more likely, if we believe that, to comply and to do that thing which would compromise us. Another reason that social engineering is successful is intimidation. If somebody gets a vishing call with a V and they are told it's the IRS in the United States, we have this organization called the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. And if they pretend to be the IRS and, oh, you're in trouble and you got to do this, you know what? If that freaks somebody out so badly that they're really nervous, that could cause them to actually do the action the attacker wants them to do, which is going to end up in you know sending some kind of currency to some other destination so the attacker can get it. And that would be an example of intimidation. Another reason that social engineering is so darn successful is consensus. Hey, everybody else believes that. <laughs> everybody else is doing this. My dad once said, if everybody, if all your friends were jumping off a cliff, would you jump off the cliff? <laughs> I don't remember what, what my answer was, but today it would be, well, do I have a bungee cord or do I have a parachute? Let me get, I need more detail. So the idea behind consensus is that if a whole bunch of people agree with whatever this thing is, and it, or it looks like they all agree, it's more easier for the person who we're trying to manipulate to go ahead and agree and follow along. Another fun technique that's used is scarcity. Limited time only. You got to do this now. <laughs> Where if the user doesn't act quickly, they may lose on an opportunity. So the attacker could come in with all these options available and just start hitting the button that's working against the victim. Another angle that's commonly used is familiarity or trust. So an attacker who wants to compromise a person, maybe they don't just come right out and say, please give me this information. Perhaps they, they stalk them on social media. They become friends with them. They gain their trust. And as an individual is now more familiar with the other individual, they're more likely at the end to do what that attacker is intending for them to do, which includes maybe revealing information they shouldn't or revealing a password or clicking a link, etc. Because if the victim both has familiarity and likes the person and also trusts the person, that is really tricky, especially when that attacker has nefarious or malicious intent as an end result for that relationship. And as we take a look at these options of why social engineering attacks can be successful, I'd also like to just reinforce the concept of urgency. Now, I know I've, I've implied that throughout several of these techniques. However, the sense of urgency of having to do something now or you're going to lose out or be in trouble or have a problem... That doesn't give the brain enough time to think, and oftentimes that can cause the victim to do, again, something like click a link, reveal information, or do something else that otherwise they never should have done. Which, if they do that thing which the attacker is enticing them to do, they could then have the compromise happen to themselves, to their network, or to the company, or all three. So thanks for joining me in this set of videos regarding social engineering techniques. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.